Here we have Matilda, good old Matilda. She's female, or is she? Hmm, it's up to you, the storyteller, to make her or him what you want. <clears throat> but in the interest of time, we will assume that she's a woman. She has large hazel eyes and short blonde hair. Her nose is large, and one could say bulbous. Her face is round, and she is thin-lipped, but is smiling. She has dimples, which conflict with the thin lips. And she is middle-aged, maybe around 55 years old or older. She wears a short-sleeved red blouse with yellow trim. She has wide blue shorts and red shoes. And she's short and overweight. This will be the basic description. But you can dress it up with more colorful adjectives. For example, the red shoes do not match the top and can be described as the color of dried blood. When dropping ideas like blood in your description, this alerts the reader that this might be a mystery or detective story. Matilda can easily become a mat or vice versa. Is there anything else in this picture that I missed? Well, she's waving a handkerchief and is crying. So she's showing emotion. That is why I categorized her as a woman. Men usually don't wave handkerchiefs and cry unless they're acting in a play or happen to be waving to their mother-in-laws and pretending to cry as they are leaving. We touched a little on relationships. We'll go further into it here. Relationships can influence and shape your characters. Relationships are important to your characters. They help define the roles of the characters and often reveal their psychology. They can also reveal the strengths and weaknesses of characters as they interact with other characters, and they can be part of the plot. Relationships can occur with family members like father, mother, siblings, in-laws, relatives, step-parents, and so on. Family relationships are not always rosy. For example, a divorced mother with a child that has cerebral palsy needs to take care of that child as well as have to work. How will she go about doing it? Should she date the millionaire who is a narcissist or prefer being alone and poor? It depends on her character traits and the circumstances she finds herself in. Maybe a parent or other family member will help. Maybe the narcissist will change for her. Even some family relationship from the past could come and haunt the person in your story. In my historical novel, The Greek Maiden and the English Lord, Lily's hidden past resurfaces years later, triggered by a traumatic event as she relives the ordeal of losing her mother in the fire. This revelation is cathartic and allows her to move forward to love and be loved. Friends come in all types of packages and relationships. Close friends can range from a childhood friend whom you've had all your life who knows your deepest secrets. It could be two people, a man and a woman, who met and became close friends, and if they fell in love, then they will be the major characters in the story. Distant friends are the ones that maybe you were close at one time, but over the years, you became distanced. Maybe you keep in contact with them by email and rarely get together except for a holiday or celebration. Acquaintances are just that. They're not close enough to be friends and the relationship is shallow. As in seeing someone in church whom you will always greet but you never get close enough to get to know better. They might serve a purpose in the story as a minor character who knows something or helps move the plot forward. Colleagues are the people your character works with or colleagues can also work with a family member. They're professional and sometimes distant, and they know a lot about the job. They can also be crafty and devious and can cost your protagonist their job. Or they can be friends with your protagonist or major character, and then you can have them go out after work for a drink or for lunch. Sometimes your character will reveal a secret that no one else knows, or the other way around, which may push the story forward. Remember, always use relationships in your story to reveal something or provide conflict to push it forward. Finally, use the strangers in your story as the extras that we talked about. There is really no apparent relationship and they can be part of the setting. However, you can change all that. You can start off as one person being a stranger and then slowly evolving into a friend and maybe a love interest. Or you can have the stranger turn out to be an enemy who is spying on your major character. So you have many options to choose from when you're dealing with relationships. If your story deals with several family members, it would be good to make a family tree. 
Know the date of your protagonist's birth as compared to family members and write it down. You don't have to include all of this in your story, but it's good to know it. By doing a family tree, it helps with accuracy and consistency. Also, write down their physical attributes so you can remember what color their hair and eyes are and so on.